Hey folks, it's Mike, KE0VIM, the traveling ham. I am back in my home state of Kansas. About a year ago, I did a little experiment with my TDH8 uh, that I received from TED Radio to do a little video review on. I don't know how much of a review I did. I did a little demonstration. We're going to do the same today. And in that, I paired this 10 watt radio up against a 5 watt radio and we did what I call repeater hunting. So I sat in one spot and tried to hit repeaters uh, at various ranges and see how far a uh, repeater I could reach with the, with the 10 watt versus the five watt. And overall, it, while that was, you know, it spoke to how much more range you get or how little more range you get with a 10 watt versus a 10 watt, but I wasn't happy with the granularity of that experiment. So we're gonna try it again today. I've got the 10 watt, TDH8. I've got the 8 watt TalkPod and I've got the 5 watt TDH3. This is also given to me by TID Radio uh, to do a couple videos on, of which this is the second. Okay, folks, here's the deal. I'm at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. This is going to be a special one of the most intense trails. This is the operating station. That's a bear. Wow. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? That traveler has. I just do things. This is a huge, beastly, bulging man. Plates were from Kansas. So we're going to start with the 10 watt radio. Obviously, I'm on the road. I've got a repeater that's about 30 miles away, a little less. I think it's about 28 from where I'm at. I'm going to drive right towards it here in the flat plains of Kansas, and I'm going to call with my TDH8. And we're just going to keep driving forward until I actually hit that repeater. Now, for those of you that aren't hams, when I hit a repeater, when my signal is strong enough that it actually hits the repeater and gets repeated, I will get a confirmation back from the tower. It'll be a, a, a kerchunk of some kind, or the tower will identify itself, uh, either via Morse code or with a recorded voice message. So that's what I'm listening for. If my string, if my signal, my uh, transmission is strong enough to hit that tower, I'll get that confirmation and I'm gonna drive right towards that tower while calling on this radio until I hit it. And I'll try about every half mile or so. And uh, that'll get me a lot finer granularity on this experiment. And we can get within a half mile, you know, what's the real difference between 10 watts, eight watts, and five watts? That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna start with the TDH8, 10 watts. All right, here we go. I'm turning on uh, my highway here. It's gonna head right towards the repeater. And we'll see how we do. Test number one. KE0VIM, testing. Okay, nothing. I'm just gonna watch my odometer here. I am on a two lane highway, so obviously I gotta be as careful as I can. No sharp curves or mountains or anything like that, so that's good. Just gotta keep it in my lane and make sure they're doing the same. KE0VIM, KE0VIM, testing. 10 watts. Oh. Yeah, I'm on high. <laughs> KE0 VIM. There's a little bit of topography out here, but not much. I do see a little bit of a rise ahead of me. Like I'm in a little bit of a low right here. It's Kansas. It's not much. KE0 VIM. KE0 VIM. KE0 VIM. KE0 VIM. Testing. Huh. I really thought by this point we would have hit on all three radios. Am I down to 15 miles yet? 15 and a half, 10 watts. KE0, VIM, KE0, VIM, testing. Very interesting. I'm almost wondering if it is a line of sight issue now. KE0, VIM, testing. If all of them work exactly at the same place, that might be what it is. KE0, VIM, testing. There we go. There we go, we got our hit. Got our hit, that's the confirmation we've been looking for. Let's stop and check our range and pull over on this dirt road. We are at 13.3 miles. 
10 watts. That's about half of what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Next radio, 8 watt talk pod. Frequency mode. Now, if they all work right here, then I'm thinking I've probably got a line of sight issue, and that's what's going to have them all be the same range. But uh, I, it look, it's, yeah, I'm still on high power. I'm on the right frequency. When I hit the transmit, I'll know if my, my offset and my uh, CTCSS are set right. We'll find out here. KE0, VIM, testing. Okay, no hit, good. So 13.3 miles was the range for 10 watts. Next, I get a three point turn on this dirt road. It is wet out here. It's been raining quite a bit. It might be a five or seven point turn at this beast on this little road. There we go. Now we got it done. Might have lost count, but I think that was a five point. That's not bad. All right, let's run the talk pod. Eight watts. KE0, VIM, testing. KE0, VIM, testing. Negative. Okay, does say uh, the CTCSS is set. I wish it told me that other than when I hit the trigger. I gotta hit the PTT to know if CTCSS is on. I, I, I wish there was an indication for that. And all three of these radios are that way. If my receive CTCSS was on, then it would display. KE0, VIM, testing. KE0, VIM, testing. I am going at a little bit of an angle to this tower, so my mile driving doesn't necessarily correspond to an hour a mile closer to the tower. It's got it uh, just off to my northeast now. Bearing of 055. I'm not quite driving straight at it. KE0 VIM testing. Got it. That wasn't too much farther was it okay that's 11.4 so we got two more miles with those two more watts how about that math all right guys had a little mishap there my gopro overheated and i got a little ways down the road before i realized it i'm back on the i had to backtrack some but i'm back on the uh the exact same turn off where i got my first hit with the talk pod, with the eight watt talk pod, okay? I'm gonna hold this up close here. Hopefully that'll focus. I can't tell here outdoors on that screen, but you can tell from the, the buttons, the print of the buttons. Hopefully that focuses well enough. You can tell that's the eight watt version that I've got uh, just, just from that. Here's what happened, watch this. This is the five watt TID Radio H3. KE0 VIM testing. I hit it. Isn't that interesting? Let's backtrack now with the 5 watt and see how far backwards we can go. Right now, this is just the radio overperforming because I've, I've gone down 3 watts and I'm still hitting on this radio. This radio is performing better on transmit than the eight watt. At beating out, right now the TID radio is beating out TalkBot. It is what it is. Okay, let's do this. Let's put the TDH3 up against the TDH8. So we're gonna head backwards. I should only have to go, I'm gonna reset my miles here. I should only have to go two miles to get back to that same road 
that I hit with the H8. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna drive a mile and I'm gonna try this one again. I'm hitting the repeater every time I do this now, so since I'm driving away, I don't wanna transmit as many times and be half as obnoxious. I like going the other way, driving into range and then just hitting the repeater once and I'm done with that radio. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm right at 12 miles right now. KE0VIM testing. Still hitting it. Go uh, another mile here and I'll be where I hit with the 10 watt. 1.6. Okay, I see. Oh, come on, stop IDing. I'm at the road, right? Oh, it's not the road. Maybe it is. I thought it was a dirt road. KE0 VIM testing. Okay. Is this my little dirt road here? This is my little dirt road here. Yep, that's it. KE0 VIM testing. I hit it. I hit it. Okay. TDH3 is now tied with the TDH8. Here's the half mile before I go down the hill. KE0 VIM testing. Got it. Got it. So I know when I go down this hill here, I'm gonna lose my transmission, but there it is, a half mile more range on the H3, five watts, compared to the H8, 10 watts. So that I was not expecting. Um, I am planning a video here the next few weeks, probably coming out sometime in November, early December. You know, what about these Chinese radios? I got a couple things I want to say about them, both from my experience and from what I've seen other people testing these radios. What's really the deal with them? And one of my theories is, is really playing out here, and I'm going to save it for that video. This radio, let's see if I can still hit it from here with the 5 watts. I've come downhill. I think I'm out of range now. Okay, E0 VIM testing. Yeah, I'm out of range now. Let's try again with the 10 watt. KE0 VIM testing. So just to be super thorough, let's head back towards the tower with the 10 watts and see what happens. If people start talking on the repeater, that's gonna totally totally screw up <laughs> anything after that, but I, I think I have my results. I have my results, but I've, I got a little upslope here. I'm yeah, we got some conversation on there now, but people are starting to drive home now and they're using their repeater. That's a good thing. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put the results up on the screen here, but 10 watts got two miles farther than the eight watts, and then the five watt radio blew them both away. Go figure. To me, I mean, I think we're getting, what we're getting at here is the H3 just has better components involved in its transmitter than the H8. It's getting a higher quality signal, a cleaner signal, and it, with half the power, is getting more range. It's getting slightly more range than the 10 watt. That's pretty impressive. Uh, this was supposed to be, I was, my deal with TID radios, I was supposed to make two 
videos featuring the TDH3. That was my deal uh, when they sent me the radio. I imagine it was the same for everyone. There was really no, no stipulation other than that. I've never been told what I'm supposed to say or that it's supposed to be positive. That's all it is, is just, we'll sing you this radio if you make two videos. And here it is. And I don't think I'll be getting any more because I think I took too long uh, to make these radios. And I, I don't know if they were totally happy with me. Eh, I can't blame them too much. A lot of stuff going on this year. But this video ended up being a lot more about that H3 than I intended it to be. It was just supposed to be a simple demonstration of the watt differences. And I thought with those three radios, it was gonna be a pretty apples to apples comparison. We still did learn something though, didn't we? Stay tuned for my what about these Chinese radios video. Hey guys, if you're still watching to this point, consider going to buymeacoffee.com and you can buy the traveling ham, a gallon of diesel and help keep the wheels turning on this little project. Now, if you're like me, you don't have a lot of money just to be throwing around all over the place. I get it. Given two, three, and five dollars to uh, all your YouTube content creators here and there uh, may not be a high priority for you. I get it. So some of the ways that you can still support the channels that you enjoy watching that are totally free, it, it's those things that everyone talks about liking, subscribing, commenting, anything that you can do that shows engagement, that you enjoy the content enough that you actually uh, click the like, you subscribe to the channel, you left a comment. It doesn't even have to be you know, a, a, an in-depth comment. You can say, hey Mike, love the video, thanks, keep it going. Something like that. I think it's gotta be something more than three words. Uh, and that really uh, will help your little channels out uh, that you want, you know, the smaller channels that you want to help grow. So without spending any money at all, without becoming a member, without going to Patreon, without going to buy me a coffee, you can do that and that'll help your little channels out uh, a whole lot. This is Mike, the Traveling Ham. Thanks for watching. 7-3. Okay, folks, here's the deal. I'm at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. This is going to be a special one of the most intense trails. This is the operating station. That's a bear. Wow. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? That traveler has power. I just do things. This is a huge, beastly, bulging man. Plates were from Kansas.